I just got these animals some food. Uh, as soon as I get done with this, I'm going over to the bank. And I'm going to go talk to the banker. If y'all take a look way back there, you're going to see a little uh, white uh, plastic container. And yesterday, uh, I brought home a couple of bags of sand. And uh, I put it, uh, I, I pushed the, uh, the target back and I shot at it. And uh, sand, I was uh, reading that sand is very good at stopping bullets. And so I put a, a sandbag, a couple of sandbags in that container and then I shot at it and the sand, uh, one bag of sand will actually completely stop a uh, full powered 5.56 round. And so uh, you only need one bag of sand. And so uh, I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna get myself maybe a dozen more bags of sand and then I'm gonna fill that container up with sand. And then uh, now I got myself a little bullet trap and I can just fire into it whenever I want. And so I figured that's kind of cool. And so uh, I'm going to go and uh, buy myself some more sand. But uh, as soon as I get done with this, uh, I'm going to go to the bank. And so uh, yesterday I was going over this. And uh, you know, uh, me, when I go and talk to the banker, you know, uh, when you, okay, so anybody, it doesn't even matter if it's, it's not just me. It, it could be you. It could be anybody. Right. I mean, there's a when I say a you, what I mean is the individuals watching this video. Right. I mean, if there's 500, 400 of you watching this video, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking to every single person individually. Right. I mean, that's uh, that's kind of the experience. Right. It's like when I make these videos, it's like now I get a, an opportunity to address essentially everybody individually. And I talk in, a, you know, broader realities like a 97 percent of people are going to be poor. All right, like when you take a look at the world, and I talk about this from my perspective, but from what I have seen, I have not met anybody, not one person, that made even remotely as much money as me, not even close. All right, I don't know a single person. Do I know anybody that could legitimately wake up tomorrow with five grand and turn it into a hundred grand in two years? I don't know a single person that can do that except for me. Like I'm the only person, it's like if I had $100 a month, I'm the only person that I know that could do this legitimately. If I had $100 a month, I could turn that into 100 grand in two to three years. It would take me three years if I was slow. If, you know, if everything kind of went okay, it would take me two years. But when I think about it in terms of a broader reality, you know what? Warren Buffett could probably also do it too. Like if I if Warren Buffett was given one hundred dollars a month, he could he could turn that into a hundred grand as well. So I'm not the only person on the entire planet that can do this, right? And but I'm probably the only person that can do this by running a commercial cattle farm. And I've talked about this, but organically I have not met anybody that is as successful as me financially. Not one person. I make four times more money than I spend. I invest about 75% of my money. About one third of my money is like a one, is like a, you know, cause here's the thing is that I utilize debt to, to purchase assets. And so I actually invest more than 100% of my income because I actually utilize debt. And so in reality, I, I, uh, I invest more than 100% of my income. And I organically have not met a single person that is doing as well as me financially, not in my own life. I have not just been walking. And if I take a look at it for what it is in terms of the broader U.S. economy, the chances of, of something happening like this is 0.00001%. And that's in terms of the broader U.S. economy is not just cattle farming. There's only 20,000 people or so in the entire country. 30,000 people in the entire country. That made as much money as me over the last year. Over the last 365 there's over the last 365 days, there's only 20,000 people in the entire country. 30,000 people in the entire country. And it's like, well, you know, I'm probably the only one that managed to do it by running cattle, by starting my own cattle business. And so take that for whatever it may be. I've already talked about this, but me, uh, 
like a me okay like i was talking about this yesterday but if i utilize my benchmark animal a 200 pound animal that i purchased for 700 dollars, if i utilize my benchmark animal and then i say my target weight for the market right now is six is uh, 650 pounds i'm uh, i'm looking to take my target weight up for market up to 650 pounds and i'm purchasing number one to one and a half type medium large frame animals and the feeder cattle market goes sideways from 230 to 240 essentially over the next about five or six months with which is what I anticipate that it will do, then uh, any time that I sell a 650-pound animal, I actually make enough money to buy two animals. And so I effectively double my money. But when I take a look at it for what it is, in reality, I essentially make about a 75% return on my money. I don't actually make double my money. Because in reality, when I take a look at the numbers for what they are, and I actually take a look at how much money is going into my bank account. I talk about this all the time. You need to keep track of how much money is going in and out of your bank account. You need to actually take a look at the numbers, right? And you need to be able to take a look at the numbers and figure out what's going on. I actually only make about a 75% return on my money. And so, uh, but me, another way to think about how much money do I make on a monthly basis, even if I'm not doing well, is if I have 650 pound calves, if I sell 10 650 pound calves and I go to the market and I purchase 12 200 pound calves, I still come home with like $6,000 cash on top of everything. I've replaced my animals and I've brought home $6,000 cash. And that's me when I'm not doing good. Right? I'm not even pushing myself to, to really, uh, you know, uh, you know, to really just... I'm not really even pushing myself really, really hard. I'm, I'm you know, I'm more focused on the uh, on the the acquisition of more land right now. I'm looking at buying more land right now. I'm not really pushing my cattle business that hard. Once I get my new piece of property, I will push my cattle business a little harder. Right, because I've already talked. About, I'm not going to split my chops open for an extra three grand a month. I don't really care about the three grand a month. What is that? Thirty five thousand dollars a year. I don't care about thirty five thousand dollars. Right, uh, you know, uh, thirty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars is. I'm not gonna split my chops open for thirty-five grand. Thirty-five grand is a worthless amount of money. If I was given thirty-five thousand dollars tomorrow, it wouldn't do anything. I make twenty thousand dollars a month, and I'm not even doing very good. And so, you know, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, no, oh, I actually talked about this in the past, but for me, when I uh, when I financially, when I started doing very, very, very well, it was actually hard for me to, to deal with it. Uh, but, you know, I, but at this point, I actually want to talk about this. But at this point, the the uh, the it's kind of passed. I don't I don't feel I don't feel uh, the, the difficulty about it anymore. I've just kind of accepted it as reality. And I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, I understand that I make a boatload of money. Oh, uh, no, uh, I understand that I do. And but I, I but on the other side of things, it's like I understand that I make a boatload of money because I do something that is useful. Right. It's not like I'm manufacturing drugs. It's not like I'm, uh, you know, uh, being a worthless idiot. Right. I mean, I, I, I raise beef cattle. And so, I mean, it, I get paid because I do I do honest work and I do a very good job at it. And I wanted to talk about the uh oh, and I wanted to talk about this, and I was speaking about this yesterday. But okay, you know, why do you not want to come off as a poor person? Why is it so important to learn to not uh, communicate like a poor person? Uh oh, he's straight up laying in the the feed trough. Come on, let's get out, mama. Oh, uh, the idea of uh, communicating like a poor person. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm trying to get her out of the feet. Bro. So, you know, you got to understand, uh, like me, okay, me, when I talk to somebody, if depending on what they talk about, you're going to be able to realize are they poor or are they broke or are they actually doing well financially? You're going to be able to tell uh, me, I'm able to tell. If I speak to somebody, and they're uh, about to throw some Hail Mary, right? I mean, they have no idea what they're doing, but they, uh, they've they convinced themselves that, you know, uh, whatever it may be, 
right? They are on the verge of imploding. Because here's the thing, it's like, okay, I know, I was talking about this yesterday, but if you're going to go and do something, uh, make sure, like, uh, to a to a legitimate degree, make sure you actually check what you're doing, right? Like, uh, you know, go over everything 5,000 times. I, I was saying that yesterday, right? Go, go over everything 5,000 times. Everything. What kind of animals are you going to bring in? What kind of feed are you going to put them on? What kind of antibiotics are you going to use? What kind of uh, preconditioning program are you going to have? Go over everything 5,000 times. All right? Because you don't want to be in a situation where it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to throw a Hail Mary. And then it's going to work out for me in a spectacular fashion. And then I'm going to go walking off into the sunset, you know, singing Kumbaya with my buddy, buddy, pow, pals. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to kick all my problems down the road. And, you know, you don't want to be that. You don't want to do that, right? I mean, that's a very, very, very clear indicator that you're dealing with a poor person. Right? I mean, how, what can you talk about that would not make you sound like a poor person? Answer the question. I accumulated an ABC asset at this price. And I have appreciated the value of said assets X, Y, Z amount. You can, you can talk about something like that. I purchased a rental property. I got it for uh, this much. I increased the rent by $50 a door. It increased the appraisal value of the property by this much. And I also produce a net positive income of this much now. Some, you can talk about something like that. <clears throat> what are things that you should not talk about? I'm going to go on a mystical, magical adventure. I'm kicking all of my problems down the road, right? I mean, anything like that. You don't want to speak of anything like that. If you come off like that, it's very not good. So, you know, you don't want to communicate like a poor person. And I've always said that, like, if you're, if you're going to go and you're going to talk about business, right? It isn't, and I'm telling you, if you're going to go and talk about business, and you're going to talk about business with somebody who actually knows how to do business, right? Like, you've actually, by some, some stroke of luck or something, it was a 1 in 10 million chance that you meet somebody like this and you happen to meet one. It's a one in 10 million chance. I haven't met anyone that's capable of making even a close to as much money as me. Not even close. I make almost like a, you know, uh, you know, not even close. I, I you know, uh, I make almost four times more money than I spend. And uh, here within six months, that's going to go up drastically. I mean, I might end up making 25 times more money than I spend. And so, you know, I haven't met anybody, not even close. If you put me in a room with one million people and everybody in that room got $200, $100 a month, whatever the amount of money was, it doesn't matter. I could turn one hundred dollars a month into one hundred grand in two years, in three years if I was slow. And I, and I talked about this too, but yesterday, you know, I was talking about this. You don't ever, ever, ever say that the money is the problem. The money is not the problem when it comes to doing anything in terms of business. Money is always the easy part. If you see money as the problem, you're going to come off as a poor person. Because imagine that I walked into the bank today and I said, I don't have money. What do you think that they're going to say? Are you a, are they, then why are you here? But imagine that I walk into the bank and instead what I say is what I'm going to say. I already run a successful business. My business makes almost a quarter million dollars a year. My total income for the year is about $325,000. I utilize one fourth of what, you know, I, 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 I use one fourth of what I make. One fourth. I invest about 75% of my money. In terms of just net positive cash flow, I'm net positive almost seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a month 
Here is the proof. Take a look at the numbers. It's completely different. This is where I'm saying when like a when you go into the bank and you're talking to the banker, you always want to make the money first. You show the banker that you're already making the money. That's very important. You have to do, you know, if you don't do this, the banker, it immediately sets the tone for the entire conversation. Well, I might be investing into this man's La La Land adventure. This might turn into a mystical, magical journey. Right? I mean, what, you know, you know, you know, it's going to turn into, you know, this might, this guy might be throwing a Hail Mary into the middle of nowhere. But if you walk into the bank and you tell them, I'm already making the money. Here is the proof. Well, here are my cattle checks. When I purchase 10 calves, I spend about seven grand, but when I sell 10 calves, I make about 14. Even with a 20% death loss, I still have a net positive income of almost $6,000 a month. Here is the proof, here are my numbers. Well, now I'm, you know, well, okay, now I see, well, I mean, you know, now I see his numbers and now I offer the deal. What do you never do? What, you know, what do you never, ever, ever do? What is something a poor person does? They ask for things. If you walked into the bank today and just asked for a loan, very poor thing to do. You don't want to come off as a poor person. You never ask for anything. You always offer a deal. Always offer a deal and then think about what the other person wants as well. You always consider it. Me, I know what the bank wants. Why right? The bank wants to give out loans to well-qualified individuals. Why do they want to give out loans? Because when they give out loans, they collect interest on the loan and then they make money on that loan. Also, the banker gets a, uh, gets a bonus. Right. I mean, the banker gets a bonus. And so there's an incentive to give out loans to, to well-qualified individuals. Right. So I know what the bank wants. I know how to present the deal. Always think about the deal. Even me. Like me, like me there, you know, there's a deal that is available for everybody. Right. If you really want to speak to me for two hours about business, it's 100 grand. Why? Because. If somebody could actually do this, like if any of you could actually do this, you would make 100 grand in less than five months. Right. I mean, if like if you had somehow just convinced yourself that you could be like the best cattle farmer on the entire planet, you just woke up one day and just and this is also why I make it 100 grand, because a lot of people, there is no way you're going to make it. You're probably not even going to make it to the 10 percent mark if you live to be five thousand. Right at the rate you're going, you're probably not even going to do that. I mean, you know, for me to make it, I had to work every single day for 15 years straight. And I didn't even get paid until my 13th year. Before I became a cattleman, I was a world class crop man. Maybe one of the best on the entire planet. Right? I mean, you know, you're not going to take some average person, teach them how to grow grass to a world class level, teach them how to run cattle to a one in a, you know, one in a million level. And then you're not going to teach them how to run a business as well and then put it all together. You just can't do it. I mean, I can almost guarantee it is not possible. I would be willing to bet money. And if I bet money 50 to one with everybody that just magically decided that they wanted to do this, I mean, I would make such a large amount of money on that bet, even if I took it 50 to one. No, I guarantee it. I mean, it's, you know, and I've always said that, you know, getting into the farming business is not something that most people should even realistically consider. It's almost impossible. There's a reason why I'm the only one that made it. I haven't seen anybody even get to the 10% mark. Not one. And me, I make over, I make over $200,000 a year on just this cattle business. On a 10 and a half acre field. A lot of people can't even make $200,000 a year on a thousand acres. And so, you know, you got to think about the money. Right? I mean, and if and I've talked about money and it's like, you know, if, if there was somebody that could actually, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Like if it was anything, when it comes to the money, almost anybody would be willing to do it if they could do it. 
The only reason they don't is because they can't, right? I mean, think about making $250,000 a year. I mean, the average person would sell their soul for $250,000 a year. You don't think that they'd go and become a farmer, right? I mean, the reason people don't do this is because they can't. Why can they not do it? Because the work is almost impossible, I mean, it's almost impossible. There is no I fell out of heaven a seven. There is no faking it till you make it. Either you can do it or you can't. Right? I mean, your opinions aren't worth anything. Not even one cent. If anything, they should, you know, you should just not present your opinion. Right? I mean, I guarantee it. If You know, because like if I walk into a bank right now and I said, you know, uh, you know, I just have a bunch of opinions. They're going to ask, they're, they're not going to give me anything. They're going to say, you know, a goodbye. Why would I give you a loan? What am I going to say when I walk into the bank? I make about $20,000 a month. I'm not even doing that. I'm not going to say I'm not doing that good, but I'm not even doing very good right now. But I've stabilized myself at about $20,000 a month. I'm not really pushing myself too hard. I'm not really, you know, uh, doing, uh, you know, I'm not really, uh, you know, splitting my chops open or nothing. And I'm making about $20,000 a month. You know, uh, when I get my new property squared away, I'll uh, I'll push harder and I'll, and I'll do better. Right. And, and I'll make more money. But right now I'm just kind of uh, more interested in purchasing more land. I already make the money. Right. I mean, the deal is going to cost me, I estimate, probably about two thousand to two thousand three hundred dollars a month. Right. I've already told you how to figure out the price. You go on Google right now and type in mortgage calculator, press enter. It will type it will come up with a little thing. And then you just you just type in the numbers. A three hundred twenty five thousand two hundred seventy five thousand dollar loan on a 20 year term at six percent interest is what? About two thousand dollars a month. And about half of that loan is going to be principal. So realistically, I'm only really spending about $1,000 a month on interest and $1,000, the $1,000 a month I'm spending on interest is also probably going to be tax deductible. If I want to figure that out, I can ask my CPA, right? I mean, you know, what am I at risk for? Nothing, right? And this, this is also something that, you know, I've always uh, tried to drill it into everybody, you know, I can almost guarantee, you know, uh, but I, I can almost guarantee, and I'm not saying this to make fun of, you know, I'm not, you know, because 97% of the population is probably poor to some degree. I mean, if you quit working today, within 15 years, you would be scared. Even if you had money, within 15 years, you would be scared that you have no money, right? I mean, you're going to retire uncomfortably. You're going to have no money. I mean, you're going to have a lot of problems, right? I can get, I can almost guarantee 97% of the population of America is, you know, is, is borderline poor or is poor. Right. I mean, you know, and I'm not and I'm not making fun of 97 percent of the country. I'm just looking to make it maybe if I make it apparent like this is what's actually happening to you. Maybe it will snap you out of it. But the chances of anybody not being poor once it's happened, it's almost zero. Because if you somehow by some miraculous thing. Uh, some some miraculous whatever you actually manage to turn yourself from a poor person into a broke person you can fix being broke within six months even me if i lost everything i could i would just be broke and within six months once i started running cattle again i could just go and rent myself a farm and when i started running cattle again i would just have so much money that i could do whatever i wanted right i mean realistically it would take me, what, six months, seven months? Because why? Even if I lost all of my physical possessions, I'm still a world-class farmer. I may be one of the best farmers on the entire planet by a long shot. I mean, if you put me on a, if you put me on a field with 999 other people, 1,000 of us on the field, I may make more money than all 999 people combined. Right. I mean, even if I lost all of my physical possessions, it would not matter. I could have it all back within six months. Why? Because I'm not poor. I'm just broke. And if I'm broke, if anybody's broke, you can fix it in six months. How do you fix being broke? Let's say you've actually managed by some miraculous thing. You've actually managed to turn yourself from a poor person to a broke person. 
right? You're not going to go on a mystical, magical adventure. You're not going to throw a Hail Mary into the middle of nowhere. You know, you're not going to go implode. You're not going to, you know, come up with some worthless scheme. You're not going to sit there and go, I fell out of heaven to seven. And you're actually a, a, a broke person now. How do you fix being broke? You invest your money into tax deductible assets that can be appreciated profitably. That's how you do it. It does not matter what it is. And I've always suggested rental property, right? Why do I suggest rental property? Because it's very easy to check the numbers. It's very easy to see how much money is going to go in and out. Right? It's easy to see how much money you're going to make. And the chance of failing is all is like less than 10% in a rental business. Right? And, and it's a very realistic look at what you can do. And once you've paid off your rental property, which you will one day, and even right now, I mean, if you get a little bit of a below market average and uh, you consider the possibility of rates going down and you can refinance your property in 10 years and that will increase your cash flow and all of these various things. I mean, it's you don't need to be. I mean, chances are nobody's going to make I'm telling you the chances of, of anybody getting to this level at farming is almost zero percent. You don't want to go in and, and, and put all your eggs in one bas in, in the in the farming basket. Oh, granted that, you know, I mean, if you're very young, then maybe. I mean, if you're willing to drop everything you're doing for the next 15 years and just learn how to farm for 15 years, then maybe. But, I mean, chances are it's not going to happen. I mean, to learn how to farm like this, it will take a long time. A long time and a lot of effort. And most people are not, you're not going to be able to do it. I guarantee you're either going to quit or you're going to turn into an idiot. I guarantee it. You're going to throw yourself off a cliff. You're going to blow yourself up. Right? I guarantee it. Eventually, it will happen and then you will lose everything. And then right back to square one. You couldn't stop yourself from being an idiot. You couldn't stop yourself from blowing yourself up. And now we're right back at square one. Right? I mean, you know, probably should not be going to try and be a farmer. Should not do it. I may be the most successful cattle farmer on the entire planet. By a long shot. I make, almost, I make over $200,000 a year running commercial cattle on a 10 and a half acre field. I mean, I don't know anybody that even gets remotely close, not even 10%. And so, I mean, you know, but I get, I can almost guarantee, and I don't say these things because it, like, I get a kick out of it. I don't say these things because I find it enjoyable. I'm saying once you're poor, you're probably stuck that way forever. You're not broke, you're poor, right? And if you're poor, I mean, it's almost always a done deal. But if you somehow miraculously turned yourself from a poor person into a broke person, you can solve being broke in six months. How do you solve being broke? You purchase tax deductible assets that can be appreciated profitably. You check everything 5,000 times. It wouldn't even take six months. You check everything 5,000 times. Make sure everything lines up and then you go for your deal. You, 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 you create, you know, you, uh, you work a contract for a deal. You make sure everything lines up. You make sure you check everything 5,000 times and then you do it. And now boom, congratulations. After about two or three deals, you effectively have some, I mean, you're not going to be able to buy a yacht and you're not going to be able to buy a private jet, but I mean, you can effectively buy 99.999% of anything on the entire planet. Even me, you know, I can buy essentially anything that I want. And I will still have like 15,000, you know, once I get my, even right now, you know, even right now, after I buy my new property and everything, I mean, I will still have thousands of dollars a month left over. Thousands. I mean, it, it, you know, it's like seven grand. And once I get my new field of uh, cash flowing, I mean, my, I, I would anticipate that my net positive cash flow goes over $20,000 a month. That's net positive cash flow. Just the amount of money that I'm generating goes over $20,000 a month. And I'm also storing equity in the value of my herd. I also have equitable investments like land. I'm talking about just cash. I mean, it's going to go over $15,000 a month. And so I can already buy anything that I want. Even right now, I'm net, I'm net positive almost like it's seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a month on a ten and a half acre field. Right? I mean, I can I can essentially do anything that I want, 
and you know when it when you know it's kind of you know but me i've actually uh now that i you know when i think about it i've actually made my peace with it i've made my peace with it it doesn't make me feel bad anymore it doesn't or i'm not even gonna say bad it, it just doesn't make me feel uh it doesn't make me feel anything anymore uh you know i used to you know, like i was confused and i was like i don't know uh, i don't know what to you know like uh like what should i do and you know but now i've made my peace with it it is what it is you know i give all of my information away for free you know i've always said i'm not going to jump in the jar with nobody either you jump out of the jar on your own accord or you die in the jar you know i don't i don't save people if you by some miraculous uh, turn of fate have actually managed to turn yourself from a poor person into a into a broke person, you know, it's it's not hard to fix being broke. But if you're poor, if you're like, I fell out of heaven to seven, my life is a mystical, magical journey, you know, uh, you know, you're going to come up with some worthless scheme, some worthless plan. I mean, you're never going to break out of that. Chances of breaking out of that are almost zero percent almost zero and that's where 97 percent of america is stuck i can almost guarantee it 97 percent of people in america are in in some degree of level poor i would almost guarantee it if i walked into a walmart right now and picked everybody out of that walmart 97 percent of people would either be on the you know they're kicking their problems down the road you will eventually blow yourself up you're just ignoring the fact or you are currently in a situation where you just are being an idiot. I guarantee it. I mean, you know, it's like, an, I, and my big prediction for this is that within 10 years, half of the country will not be able to retire. Over 65 will not be able to retire. Out of the people who can retire, 47%, you know, uh, you know, uh, 97% of the country is not either one not going to be able to retire or is going to retire uncomfortably to such a degree that they will either have to come back and work or they will be afraid of money forever. They will be worried about their finances forever. I would be willing to bet. All right, and you know, 97% are going to be somewhere in that range. And if we if we uh, take the uh, the uh, the age range down from 65 to 25, Within the next 10 years, you will have cemented yourself as a poor person forever. By the time you're 35, you will be a poor person forever. I guarantee it. 97%. And if by some miracle, and you know, a part of me is like, if I can, if I can legitimately turn one person, if I, if, if I can turn one person into a reasonable rich person, then I, I'm very happy. I, I, would, I would have considered all of this worth it. I would have considered all of this a good investment of my time. Because there's no way that I'm going to go and hold everyone's hand individually. But if I can turn one person from a poor person into a not poor person, even if I turn you from a poor person into a broke person, I would consider that a massive success. Just one person. You know, but, uh, you know, then I would consider all of this a good investment of my time. But how do you go, you know, but being poor and being broke, I mean, you know, going from poor to broke is almost impossible. The chances of it happening are nearly zero percent. Because why? By the time you become poor, I mean, it's usually, I mean, I can almost guarantee if you're 25 right now, within the, even, it could even be 15, by the time you're 25 or by the time you're 35, you will permanently be a poor person. You will have cemented yourself into a poor person. You're going to go on mystical, magical journeys, la la land adventures. You know, my life is a, you know, my life is a journey to Disneyland. And then you're just going to always kick your problems down the road, always be on the verge of blowing yourself up. I mean, imploding, drowning in the ocean, whatever you want to call it forever. I can almost guarantee it. But how do you break out of that? You need to start investing your money. You need to actually go and look for an asset. And when you invest your money, you should be invest like me. Why do I invest money into my cattle? Because I get all of my money back plus a return. If I take my if I take my earnings and I purchase a tax deductible asset, what happens? I've traded my money for an asset that is equally as valuable as the money itself. And when the asset goes up in value, I have now turned my money into an unrealized gain. 
And I can realize those gains when with an investment strategy to reduce my tax burdens. Right. I mean, you know, you, anybody can do this and you don't have to be a cattleman to do this. You can do this with anything as long as you understand the asset fundamentally yourself. You have to make sure you understand your assets. Why did I purchase this asset for this price? Because that was the equity value. That was the appraisal value of the asset. What am I going to do to increase the value of the asset? This is what I'm going to do. Increase the rent per door. And if I do that, what's going to happen, right? I mean, the appraisal value of the property is going to go up and you're also going to increase your net positive cash flow. If everything goes good, you will make all of your money back plus $1,000. If things don't go good, you'll go underwater about $1,500. But don't give up on your dreams because of $1,000, right? I talk about this all the time. If you, you know, and you're going to see this happen all the time. What we're talking about is $1,000. What we're talking about is $1,500. Why did you quit because of $1,000? Why did you quit because of $1,500? Why? I mean, you could have legitimately broke yourself out from being poor forever and you gave up because of $1,000. You're going to see it happen all the time. You gave up because of $1,500. It was probably good that you quit. And you should also probably start keeping your opinions to yourself. I mean, it's not good, right? I mean, you don't want to be in a situation where you are giving up on things because of $1,000 because you're giving up on things because of $1,500. What does this farm cost me to run? Nothing. It makes me money. Right? I mean, you don't want to be in a situation where you're giving up on your dreams because you're at risk of $1,000. If, if I didn't have any feed, but the weather was good and I was going to feed 40 cattle, what would it cost me? About $750 a month. I mean, it, the, the money is negligible. The money is always the easy part. Always. It does not matter. If you ever meet, like if I ever meet anybody that's like, I don't have money and that's why I can't do it. Immediately, this, this person is a poor person. I guarantee it. You could have gone and bought yourself a 25 acre field for $1,200 a month and you quit because you didn't have the money. Are you actually dumb or are you actually an idiot? Right. I mean, why did you I mean, how did you possibly consider that the one thousand two hundred dollars was going to be why you couldn't buy this 20 acre field? Right. I mean, how I bought a 50 acre field for like two thousand dollars a month. I can go and buy a 100 acre field right now for like four thousand five thousand dollars a month. You know, it's negligible money. And if you ha and I've already said, if you have a 20 acre field, you can realistically make about a half a million dollars on it. If what one condition is met, you actually have to know how to farm. If you are a world class farmer like me on my farm on a 10 and a half acre field, I make over two hundred thousand dollars a year. On a 10 and a half acre field running commercial cattle. I'm not the only person that can do this if, if you know anybody can do this. Not not anybody can do that. I mean, if you started very young and you actually learned correctly and you practiced all the time then then 98%, you know, granted that you're born with 100 IQ, you could do it. Could you do it if you, you know, you just, you know, if you woke up at 20 years old and then just randomly decided that you fell out of heaven at seven and that you wanted to go on a mystical, magical journey and that you wanted to farm at a world class? Could you do it? Then no, it's too late. You're already an idiot. You're already borderline cemented into a poor person forever. I guarantee it. What should you be doing? Learning how to grow grass. I mean, realistically, you should not be sitting there doing any, you know, I fell out of heaven at sevens or anything. Mystical, magical journeys, nothing. You should be sitting there at a table, learning, thinking, coming up with a plan on how to grow your grass. What are the conditions that I'm looking for in planting this type of grass? What kind of fertilizer am I going to use? What kind of, uh, you know, what is the pH of my soil? What kind of equipment am I going to use? You know, everything. Come up with everything, check it 5,000 times, and then go for it. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you should be doing. That's the kind of stuff that I did, right? I didn't just sit there one, one day, r randomly wake up and just randomly decide that I fell out of heaven at seven and I was going to be the best cattleman on the entire planet. I did not do that, right? I mean, I did not even consider this a possibility. I did not even know that I was going to become this successful. 
I had no idea. When I first got here, I, I thought, you know, how good would it be if I could make $3,000 a month? I did not know that I was going to make $225,000, $250,000 a year. I did not know. And so I had no idea. I mean, I, I blew my uh, expectations out of the water. I thought, you know, how good would it be if I could make myself $3,000 a month? And that was how, that's how I got started. And then I ended up in a situation where now I'm making like $225,000, $250,000 a year. Running commercial cattle on a 10 and a half acre field. I make so much money I can do whatever I want. To a reasonable degree. And that's it for me today, YouTube. I'm actually going to go to the bank. That's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.